Good afternoon. Before anything else, I would like to thank my beloved father and mentor for cutting short his talk because he was worried we might not have enough time for hours. Thank you, Father. Our little sharing today is a tribute to our parents who taught us first to love God above all else and to love our neighbor, especially the poor, with brotherly sisterly love. It is a tribute to the educational institutions that formed us to become Christian disciples wherever we might be, and to the church that has nurtured our faith till the present, as we strive daily to live a faith that does justice. Vatican II says, the laity, by their vocation, seek the kingdom of God by engaging in temporal affairs and by ordering them according to the plan of God. They live in the world that is in each and in all of the secular professions and occupations. They live in the ordinary circumstances of family and social life from which the very web of their existence is woven. They are called there by God that by exercising their proper function and led by the spirit of the gospel, they may work for the sanctification of the world from within as a leaven. In this way, they make known Christ to others, especially by the testimony of a life resplendent in faith, hope, and charity. From Lumen Gentium, chapter 4. Nelson and I did not read Vatican II before we got married in December 1974. It was our parents who reflected its spirit to us. Our mothers raised us in prayer, and our fathers showed us the beauty of awe and fulfillment in helping others, especially those in need. As a family, we went regularly to Sunday Mass, where we were nourished by the Word of God and by the body and blood of Christ. In addition, our growing years were nurtured and influenced by at least five expressions of Christian spirituality. Benedictine, Salesian, Vincentian, Assumption, Ignatian. The Lord must have thought, you have enough to raise a Christian family of your own. We raised our children in family prayer, the Word of God, and the Eucharist. It was not an easy climb especially when, as we were concentrating on praying the rosary, saying our Hail Marys, we would see our children fight. And in Filipino, Or when, as we were trying to teach them how to reflect on the Word of God, one of them would say in Filipino first, Mama, pupupuhu ako. Mama, may I go to the bathroom? And fleshing the Word became better when the children were grown. Today, Michelle, our only daughter, and Alan, the husband, also tried to form their little family, only one son now, in the faith, as they reflect on the Word of God before they go to work or the evening before. They also have taught the little Simeon how to pray, beginning with Thanksgiving. So we would hear him say sometimes, Thank you, Lord, for my choo-choo train, or thank you, Lord, for my milk. They also learn Jesus' example that we must be neighbor to everyone, especially the disadvantaged. We remember Mitch, who's a doctor now, who had an experience with a taong grasa. Taong grasa, for the sake of those who do not know, is a, a, a person who lives in the streets, very dirty, has a, a bag full of spoiled food, garbage, whatnot, and walks around abandoned. And so there was one Taong Rasa, Lady Taong Rasa, who went to our subdivision. And Mitch was asking, was asking us one time, uh, at the time, Mama, can I have sandwiches? What for? For the Taong Rasa, there's one there in our subdivision. Okay, and he went, and it took him one long hour. And when he came back, he said, I thought you were just going to give the food. And he said, no, Mama, nakapagkwentuhan pa ako sa Taong Rasa. I talked to her, She's a woman. She's already abandoned by her children. Nakakaawa naman siya, Mama. So I, I kept her company. And NJ, who last 2011 passed on to the Lord, before that, we were talking, we were praying with scripture, and his favorite from that scripture passage was, 
and they all reported to Jesus. I said, why of all these things? We were praying, did this catch your attention? And they all reported to Jesus. First he was hesitant, then he said, Diba Mama, at the end of our life, we will all report to Jesus. And I said, and what, what would you report? That when I, when, during payday, I have extra money, I, I treat my people, because he was an architect, and he had people under him. I treat them to sit there in the store of Makar, Ali Tarnin. And if I had extra money, I'd also treat them to a free tricycle ride going home, because the tri tricycle fare was expensive. From PCP2, the church tells us that aside from the families being the first school of discipleship and evangelization, it is the first school of humanity. Indeed, the future of mankind passes through the family. So does the future of the church. We constantly strive to practice tenderness, dialogue, forgiveness in the family. Nelson and I have always been working parents, but we try to make up for our physical absence by embracing our children as often as needed. Texting them, I love you, and ingat at basal, which means take care and pray, especially when they go to their workplaces. We encourage them to express their feelings to us or to one another, especially in cases of conflict, but to do this with tact and respect. We're not always successful, but we try. We have all discovered that our family cannot be truly Christian if we cannot forgive one another from the heart. If we cannot say sorry up close and personal, we do it via notes or texting, and for some who truly find it difficult through little acts of kindness after a misunderstanding. Since about eight years ago, Nelson and I has, uh, Nelson has involved himself more in the mission of evangelization by working as a part-time values formation facilitator for Evangelion Foundation, founded by Father Edwin Mercado and Jose Pino. I had been an educator in the faith, both directly and indirectly, during the 38 years that I was with Assumption College, San Lorenzo. And since my retirement in 2011, I have taught theology to four students in, the, in order to form them to be catechists at Mary Hope of Christians College from Lubang, Laguna, where we live. The late Mother Carmen Reyes of the Religious of the Assumption bequeathed to me two very important questions. Why do you do what you do? For whom do you do what you do? I have tried to answer that through the years, but today my answer is definite. I do what I do because I love God, and I, together with my family, would like to take part in the church's mission of extending his kingdom where God has called us. I believe that today I'm able to answer those questions in all sincerity because I had the kind of parents that I had, and I heard throughout my formal education words like ora et labora, woman of faith, woman of action, men and women for others, education of the poor for the poor, and the like. Our involvement in the Synod last October has fueled our zeal for the kingdom. As we experience the universality, the warmth, and the humility of the church of which all of us are members, it has confirmed the way we have tried to raise a truly Christian family and has encouraged us to be courageous in sharing this with the bigger families, the church, and the world.